stellar evolution is the process by which a star changes during its lifetime. Depending on the mass of the star, this lifetime ranges from a few million years for the most massive to trillions of years for the least massive, which is considerably longer than the age of the universe. The table shows the lifetimes of stars as a function of their masses. All stars are born from collapsing clouds of gas and dust, often called nebulae or molecular clouds. Over the course of millions of years, these protostars settle down into a state of equilibrium, becoming what is known as a main-sequence star. Nuclear fusion powers a star for most of its life. Initially the energy is generated by the fusion of hydrogen atoms at the core of the main-sequence star. Later, as the preponderance of atoms at the core becomes helium, stars like the Sun begin to fuse hydrogen along a spherical shell surrounding the core. This process causes the star to gradually grow in size, passing through the subgiant stage until it reaches the red giant phase. Stars with at least half the mass of the Sun can also begin to generate energy through the fusion of helium at their core, whereas more massive stars can fuse heavier elements along a series of concentric shells. Once a star like the Sun has exhausted its nuclear fuel, its core collapses into a dense white dwarf and the outer layers are expelled as a planetary nebula. Stars with around 10 or more times the mass of the Sun can explode in a supernova as their inert iron cores collapse into an extremely dense neutron, star or black hole. Although the universe is not old enough for any of the smallest red dwarfs to have reached the end of their lives, Stellar models suggest they will slowly become brighter and hotter before running out of hydrogen fuel and becoming low-mass white dwarfs. Stellar evolution is not studied by observing the life of a single star, as most stellar changes occur too slowly to be detected, even over many centuries. Instead, astrophysicists come to understand how stars evolve by observing numerous stars at various points in their lifetime, and by simulating stellar structure or using computer models. In June 2015, astronomers reported evidence for population 3 stars in the cosmos redshift 7 galaxy at Z equals 6.60. Such stars are likely to have existed in the very early universe and may have started the production of chemical elements heavier than hydrogen that are needed for the later formation of planets and life as we know it. Birth of a star Protostar stellar evolution starts with the gravitational collapse of a giant molecular cloud. Typical giant molecular clouds are roughly 100 light-years across and contain up to 6 million solar masses. As it collapses, a giant molecular cloud breaks into smaller and smaller pieces. In each of these fragments, the collapsing gas releases gravitational potential energy as heat. As its temperature and pressure increase, a fragment condenses into a rotating sphere of super-hot gas known as a protostar. A protostar continues to grow by accretion of gas and dust from the molecular cloud, becoming a pre-main sequence star as it reaches its final mass. Further development is determined by its mass means one solar mass. Protostars are encompassed in dust and are thus more readily visible at infrared wavelengths. Observations from the Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer have been especially important for unveiling numerous galactic protostars and the parent star clusters. Brown dwarfs and substellar objects protostars with masses less than roughly 0.08 m never reach temperatures high enough for nuclear fusion of hydrogen to begin. These are known as brown dwarfs. The International Astronomical Union defines brown dwarfs as stars massive enough to fuse deuterium at some point in their lives, 2.5 times 1,028 kilograms, or 0.0125 m. Objects smaller than 13 megajoules are classified as sub-brown dwarfs. Both types, deuterium burning and not, shine dimly and die away slowly, cooling gradually over hundreds of millions of years. 
hydrogen fusion for a more massive protostar, the core temperature will eventually reach 10 million Kelvin, initiating the proton-proton chain reaction and allowing hydrogen to fuse, first to deuterium and then to helium. In stars of slightly over 1 m, the carbon-nitrogen-oxygen fusion reaction contributes a large portion of the energy generation. The onset of nuclear fusion leads relatively quickly to a hydrostatic equilibrium in which energy released by the core exerts a radiation pressure, balancing the weight of the star's matter, preventing further gravitational collapse. The star thus evolves rapidly to a stable state, beginning the main sequence phase of its evolution. A new star will sit at a specific point on the main sequence of the Hertz-Sprung-Russell diagram, with the main sequence spectral type depending upon the mass of the star. Small, relatively cold, low-mass red dwarfs fuse hydrogen slowly and will remain on the main sequence for hundreds of billions of years or longer, whereas massive, hotto-type stars will leave the main sequence after just a few million years. A mid-sized yellow dwarf star, like the Sun, will remain on the main sequence for about 10 billion years. The Sun is thought to be in the middle of its main sequence lifespan.